Well, let's start off with a brief introduction. I am Kira Sharissa. Someone, some people may better know me as Ziz Shurishan. I've been playing E for a little over a year now. Um, back when I started with Ziz, I quickly joined the university. Been there for like four months or something. And then I decided to leave the university for various reasons, which were mostly me being a pirate or at least trying to be a pirate, because I'm not very good at it. Also, I decided pretty soon afterwards to move to Nullsec 00. Um, to be honest, that was the best decision I've ever made in EVE, and I've been in there for about 10 months now, in the Corp de Ride formation. Uh, back when I joined, we were in Executive Outcomes Flying with Goons, but we left them for also various reasons, and now we are part of the Alliance Unclaimed, which is a big soft holder in the South. So that's a little bit about me. Um, my specialties are mining, sort of, uh, PvP. Yes, it's a confusing name. That's pretty much why they called it Unclaimed. Um, so yeah, my specialities are mostly mining, and our corp specializes in small gang warfare. Um, when I was in Nullsec, I really realized that there were a lot of ways to make really good ISK out there. Although I do like to spend ISK, so I'm not really as rich as I'd like to be. Judging from my assets and a phone app that shows it, I should have around 10 billion in assets. Which to new people may sound like a lot, but it's nothing really. Okay, so let's go on to the subject of this class, which is 100 ways to become a billionaire. I have to spoil it for you guys, though. There, I only have about 14 or 18 ways written down. So I'll uh, I'll do a global overview of the different ways. I won't go into any detail of them because I would not be able to fit that in one hour. Uh, it's it's more to give you guys an idea of what is possible in Empire and Nullsec, and to really get an idea of what you want to do in Eve Wise. Yes, I lied, and you are not getting your money back. That's pretty much the way I make my money. Um, I'm, I'm going to give a brief overview on every subject, which will be the following points. Of course, how much ISK can you make with it? How much time does it take? How difficult is it? If there's any risk involved, if it's fun, it's also very important that you do something that you think is fun. That's what we're playing E for, remember? Uh, how much commitment it takes? Is it something you can just jump into or not? And if you need any skills. Uh, I see two questions. Um, is anyone recording this? Should I? Uh, yes, I see at least two people recording this. If they could please uh, edit it up and upload it to the forum, that would be cool. And another question, small gang as in more than 20 or less than 20? Uh, usually less than 20. Okay then, so let's get started with the first way to make your risk. This is probably something that most people know about already, and pretty much everyone in ISEC has done once in his career, which is missions, mission running. Um, well, to be honest, I'm not going to go into detail about missions because almost everyone knows how they work. You accept a mission, you go out, you tough, and you get escort. You should really listen to any of the missions classes to um, get more into that. What I'd say personally is I think missions are boring, and you should stop doing them because they're really not as efficient as most people think. But it's a really good way to get started and get a hang of combat. So that's really all I'm going to say about missions. Um, 
Well, it, they're, they're not difficult. It does take a lot of time, skill-wise. It, you can get into level 4s pretty quickly. And yes, it, it really depends. I've had people say to me they make 60 million an hour, but personally I never made anything close to that. Uh, on to the second one, which is my personal favorite, and also pretty easy, which is ratting. There's quite a few different ways to rat. Um, most people will know belt ratting. You warp into an asteroid belt and there's pirates there, the NPC type. You shoot them, uh, you get sex status and you get a bounty. There's also anomalies, which you can scan down using your onboard ship scanner. And there's also the way of chaining. Um, how does chaining work? I'll give you a brief idea. Uh, you warp into a belt. There's four NPCs there. There's a battleship, a cruiser, and a frigate. What you do is you shoot the battleship. Once it's dead, you move on to the next one. And you repeat the same there. Uh, the way that works is uh, the battleship will respawn, and it has the biggest bounty, so it's more efficient. Uh, what, what you should know about ratting, ratting can make up to at least 100 million an hour, if you're doing it in the right area. Uh, in Empire, which is high sec and low sec, you'll probably not make anything close to that. Um, the 100 million mark is more for null sec, which is where I am based. And this is either in a carrier, which is like 1.5 billion or in a Macario, or something else really high-end. Um, how much time does it take, and is it difficult? Well, the good thing about ratting is you can just jump into it whenever you want. You can log in, undock, and start shooting away. It's not very difficult, unless you're doing, um, like, Plexus or something. Um... And, well, is it, is there a risk involved? It depends. If you're doing it in low sec, then, of course, there's always a little bit of risk involved. But if you're doing it in null sec, it's usually pretty safe. Which will surprise most people, because everyone thinks null sec, yeah, that's, that's dangerous. Well, it's not. Uh, there's a question from Ayet. Akiga, or how I pronounce it, I have no idea. He asks, are you chaining belts? Kill a hack via you rats, then jump to the next belt. Uh, no, I don't. Um, what I personally do is I farm anomalies. Um, we have very nice ones out here, which are for skin hubs. Uh, I just clear those, kill all the rats, and warp to the new one. Uh, if I'm using my alt together with it, I make about a hundred million an hour. Uh, like I said, there's not a much of commitment in ratting and skill-wise. Well, you can start ratting in just about any ship, but it really starts getting fast when you're at least in a battle cruiser. Um, the next method is exploration. Which is sort of similar to ratting. Um, but first I'm gonna cover this question. Um, General Sun Tzu asks, I heard some people go into null sex self and then die trying to do anomalies in Drake's or Tengus. Where do they figure out the triggers? Um, yes, some people do that and they die. They die, they're probably retarded. Yes, I've died myself once in a Macario. That was quite a loss. Um, how you figure out it? Um, you can use Google for that. It's actually on the um, the Eve wiki. You can look it up there. And there's another question from Aid. Are you salvaging the rats or just going on the bounties? Um, at this moment, I'm not salvaging because my alt is in a Dominix, a Dominix Navy issue, and it makes me more risk just to... Uh, to use it for more writing. So, as I was saying, exploration. 
Exploration is kind of similar to writing in a way, but can also be very different. What is exploration? Uh, in exploration, it basically means you fly around in a ship and you use a probe launcher. You probe down sites, which can either be plexus, which is pretty much just ratting. You can also do later sites, radar sites, all kinds of stuff. I'm not very knowledgeable about the subject, but it it takes decent scale to get into it properly, because most of the sites you will warp into have lots of uh, NPCs in there. And in high tech, most of the sites are usually already done by the time you scan them down. I'd suggest only doing these in low sec or null sec. And if you're going to do them there, you're going to need at least a cloaky ship, which can either be a covered up ship or a tier tree, or actually a tech tree. General Sun Tzu says, I usually find a radar every three low sec systems efficient for my time. Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're good at scanning and you're fast with it, then you can probably find plenty of them. But if you're like me and you're a retard on scanning, then it's probably going to take a lot more time. Um, yeah, it, because exploration is a pretty broad subject, I'm not going to go into much more detail about how you do it. Like the other subjects, you're really going to have to look at the different class to uh, get the hang of it. Um, the only thing I'll say is you really need a cloaky ship for it, which takes about two or three weeks. And yes, like people said, in Odyssey there's going to be a lot of changes in exploration. I've seen the videos, but I don't really have any idea. Um, so let's go over the pointers again. How much ISK does exploration make? Well, it, it's really largely dependent on how much luck you have. You can make hundreds of ISK in one hour if you're lucky. But you can also uh, be unlucky and not really make much ISK. It, it doesn't take that long. You can usually scan and clear a site in like 15 minutes. It, the difficulty, well, I'd say it's moderately difficult because there are so many different kind of sites and you you don't always know the triggers and scanning itself really does take some practice. Uh, risk involved. If you're doing it properly in a cloaky, then there's not a lot of risk in there. If you do it right and you watch a local, you probably won't get jumped on by any people or pirates. The fun factor, most people I've I've spoke with that do exploration think it's it's a lot of fun because you spend half your time scanning, half your time clearing sites, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's it's, it's fun, I guess. Uh, commitment, well, yeah, it it does take a little bit of commitment because you do need to skill up for the ship types. Which also brings us to the skills. Yeah, you you do need some skills for them if you want to do them properly. The next uh, way to make ISK, um, we've had a pretty long discussion in the uh, university channel about this earlier tonight, which is um, trading. Trading, yeah, what to say about trading. Most people will think about Cheetah and the endless 0.01 ISK wars. All I have to say about 0.0 ISK wars, if you're really having trouble with that, then you're trading wrong. Yes, you can do it that way, but the, uh, the real profits is usually doing it with the mission hub, which not a lot of people do, actually. What you can do for trading is uh, you can set up buy orders in mission hubs for uh, better stuff. Selling ammo, yeah, that's a good one as well. Uh, basically what you do is you move stuff to a mission hub 
or from a mission hub and then you sell it. Of course, there's different types of trading as well. There's station trading, which is usually in Jitta or Mar, which involves you sitting in a station, buying stuff in that station and selling it right there on the spot. This is usually the way most people trade because, yeah, they don't like moving a lot. And the good part about it is you can make an alt for it. You just make an alt that really only takes two days or something to train some skills for it. Um, so how much ISK can trading make? Well, for trading it is mostly 90% dependent on how much capital you have. I was talking to someone earlier in the channel who doubled his ISK today. Which you went from 20 million to 40 million in a day, which is a lot for a new player. Uh, that also gives you an indication of the kind of kind of profits you can make. Imagine you can make 20 million with only 20 million investment. How much is could you make if you had a billion? You can do the math for yourself. So how much time does it take? Well, it depends on the way you're trading. Uh, you can do it once a day, which is just updating your orders. Or you can just sit on your uh, PC all day long, updating the order. It really depends on how much time you want to spend in there. It's not very difficult. It does take some time to uh, to learn what items sell and what don't. Which is really the only risk in trading. Uh, you can buy lots of items which you think will give you profit and then end up never being able to sell them. I think everyone has had that once in his career. It sucks and there's not a lot of things you can do about it. It's trial and error mostly. Fun, yeah. Most people will say there's not no fun in trading. It, if you like numbers and you like seeing your wallet grow every minute, then trading is for you. If you're more about shooting stuff and pretty explosions, then don't trade. It's not for you. And skill-wise, you, you really don't need any skills for trading. So on to the next subject. Um, and to remind you guys, if you have any questions, um, you can put them in the channel, lecture.euni. So, next subject, wormholes. Wormholes, yeah, I have zero experience in wormholes, but from what I know of them, is you can make a lot, a lot of risk in there. Most people that are in wormholes are usually very, very rich. Um, someone mentioned uh, Wormhole Campus member. I don't know what that is, but it sounds fun. So, how much is can a Wormhole make? I have actually no idea about the numbers. You can really make billions in there. It, it depends on the type of Wormhole and the activity in there. Um... Yeah, time, time consumption on wormholes. Um, uh, I think it does take some time to get settled in a wormhole and learning the basics. And yeah, they're, they're rewarding. They're worth the time because the, the fun thing about living in a wormhole is you don't have to deal with politics. You just chew people. You're always paying attention because there's no local chat. And, you know, wormhole life is really a really different thing um is it difficult i think so i have never been in actually participating in there but when i did i noticed you really need to know what you're doing otherwise you're gonna fail big time uh jeppers alberto asked what should i be able to fly minimum to go in there well if you have to ask then you're not skilled enough yet um, you can start doing them in a drake, but that's not going to be very efficient. 
some people swear by them, but I hate Drakes and I love them. Yeah, it's confusing. Um, General Sun Tzu says, I estimate a group of 5 to 10 people in battlecruisers running C3 sites all the time. In a C2 is going to make about 40 million an hour. Yeah, I think that will be pretty accurate. Um, what you really should be able to fly if you want to do it effectively is a Tech 3 ship, preferably a Tengu. Even though I personally hate Tengus because everyone flies them, they are really very efficient for wormholes because it's easy to fly them, uh, you're pretty agile, you can get away really quickly, and you basically never die if you're doing it properly. But of course, the downside about wormholes is it's dangerous. Like I said before, if, if you have no idea what you're doing in a wormhole, you're going to die a lot. A lot of people specialize in wormholes. Um, okay. Sorry, my dad called me for chicken wings, but I'm going to pass on those. So yeah, where was I, wormholes? Um, wormholes, yeah. Uh, it, it's dangerous in there. Um, unless you're in a proper wormhole corp and they are helping you out, then it's going to be a really trial and error process. You're going to die a lot, and you'll probably move out of the wormhole in a week if you're doing it the proper way, and you know, you're know you reading up on them, you're joining a wormhole corp, then you can stay in there for months at a time. And a fun factor, yeah, most people think it's a lot of fun. Commitment, well, most people say you live in a wormhole, which is pretty accurate if you're talking about commitment. It's really, if you're living in a wormhole, then that's all Eve is about. Keeping your wormhole, keeping tabs on who's in there, chasing people out, all that kind of stuff. It takes a lot of commitment. And skill-wise, yeah, you, you need good skills for them. You're, if you're going to go in a wormhole in the first few months of your EVE career, you're probably going to have a bad time. So, on to the next subject, if there's no questions about that, which is another personal favorite of mine. And I know for a fact that the university does these as well which is incursions. Incursions. Um, they can make up to 90 to 100 million an hour if you're doing them properly. Um, yeah, it, it, it really depends on what kind of incursions you're doing and with who you're running them. And they can stick quite some time. Uh, when I was running them myself, I was doing them with uh, the Valhalla project, which is a public um, community for uh, shield work incursions. They usually take about 20 minutes for the sites that they do, which are big ones. Uh, General Suza's uh, fleet of Macarius and Vindicators takes about four to five minutes for a Vanguard site. Yeah, that it, like I said, it really depends on what version you're doing, which are easier if you're doing them in a large group, because there's a lot of people that know what you're doing. If you're doing Vanguard sites, then you to know what you're doing if you want to do them efficiently. But if you do them properly and you're efficient, then you can make a lot of risk in these. But there's a downside to incursions. To do incursions properly and efficiently, you're going to need faction-fitted ships. High-end ships, like he said, materials and vindicators, which, if you have any knowledge of ship types, are pretty expensive. Just buying a material is over one billion. So imagine if you lose it. That's going to hurt your wallet. Uh, are they difficult? Well, it depends. Like I said, if you're in the large ones, they're usually easier. It's pretty easy to get in them, to be honest. 
most people are pretty eager to help you out. Uh, is there any risk? Well, not so much. If you're paying attention and you know how to broadcast for reps, it's not very, very risky. Doesn't take a lot of commitment either because you can just log in, uh, find a group and start doing incursions. Are they fun? Um, I think they're fun for the first few hours. After a while, they do tend to get a little bit boring, though. Um, yeah, another thing I think is very good about incursions is you learn the different ship types. You learn how logistics works, and you learn how to work in a fleet. And skill-wise, you're probably going to need to be able to fly a battlecruiser very well or a battleship decently well. So let's go on to the next subject, which is usually the topic of very big debates, which is mining. Most people that join EVE are either going to hate mining or love it. This is because mining can be very boring. The only thing you can do as a miner is point a rock, you shoot it with a laser, you wait, and you fly back to a station. Rinse and repeat. But like General Sun Tzu says, AFK mining while reading and playing games is great. Yeah, that's basically my opinion on them as well. If you want to mine, then you're probably going to need to do it while doing something else. Or, yeah, mine while listening to classes. Also very good. Is mining safe? Well, it depends. If you're war directed, then you better dock up. Or pay really close attention to local. But if you do it like I do it in Nullsec, then it's pretty safe. Because you always have intel everywhere. And by the time you know someone is coming, you're already docked or passed up. And yes, I thanks for linking that. There is the uh, Omar Mining Campus, which uh, I've been a part of for uh, quite a, quite some time, actually. That is, that is the place where I made my first ISK, basically. There is one thing, one good thing about mining, though, is if you like dual boxing, then mining is for you. Um, for my own corp, I do recruitment and just had a guy join us with 10 accounts, 10 miners. Which makes a lot of risk. There's like 12 miners in one system. It's, it's crazy. You can make billions. Um, how much risk can you make with mining? It depends. If you're in Empire, you're not going to make too much. If you're in Nullsec, like you should be. You can make at least 30 million an hour being AFK. There's also the difference between ice mining and mining ores. And like most people should know, ice mining is going to change. It's going to be more profitable, but also more dangerous. So that, that actually pretty much covers mine. And I see we're already halfway through time, so I'm going to have to speed things up a little bit, sadly. So let's move on to the next subject, manufacturing. Manufacturing, yeah, this is really something you're going to have to be committed to. It's a really good source of risk, though. When I was manufacturing like half a year ago, when prices were still good, I was making about one billion a week, doing almost nothing. But the prices have since dropped, and it's like 200 million a week now. A uh, question from NIS is manufacturing is what some just call industry as well. Um, manufacturing is part of industry. Most people do call it industry, though, yeah. But there's a lot more to it. Um, how much is can you make? Well, like I said, you can make billions with it. Um, but it really depends what kind of stuff you're making. 
if you're making ammo or T1 ships, then you're probably not going to make a lot of this. If you're making capital stuff like I was doing, you can make a lot. Uh, you don't need all that much skills to manufacture. It takes, I think, about a month to uh, to get up to skills. Um, the downside about manufacturing, though, in my opinion, is if you want to make proper uh, profit, you're going to need a lot of investment. I'm talking about at least $1 billion to get a good profit. Otherwise, you're just going to spend time building something, waiting for a week or a month. Um, there's also the thing, um, manufacturing in Nullsec is going to make you more risk, because on average, manufacturing in Nullsec is going to make you more, because the prices are higher. And yes, you're going to need a pass if you're going to manufacture properly. This is because you'll have more slots and it's faster. A dragon asks, can you train manufacturing on an alt on the same account, or does it require you to be logged in loads? Um, it's very possible. You can train it on the same account if you want, uh, but it does take some time to get up to skills, about a month or so. But after that, you really don't need to be logged in very well. And yes, Ide gives a very good tip. Anything that is used and consumed in PvP is worth looking at for manufacturing. And like Atlin says, dual training queue is coming with Odyssey, so that's going to be a very good thing for uh, manufacturing alts. The thing with manufacturing is, though, it's um, you can go into depth very, very long. There's so much to know about manufacturing that I could not possibly can include it in this class. So I'll go and move on to the next subject, which is part of industry, which is researching and copying. What does researching and copying mean? Well, um, when you buy a blueprint original, it's not researched, which means you have a very inefficient blueprint. You'll lose uh, minerals when you're making them, and it'll take a lot of time to build stuff. What you do then is you research the blueprints. Um, when you research them, it, it depends on the BPL, but it'll take some time. And eventually, you'll have like a 0.1% loss when you're building stuff. What you can do with researching is you buy a blueprint, you research it, and you resell it. An example of this is what I was talking about earlier in the other channel, is I once bought a blueprint for 400 million. I researched it for about a month, then totally forgot about it. Um, about a week or so ago, I realized I still had it laying around, and I sold it for 800 million. So that gives you an idea of the kind of profit you can make on researching. The downside is it takes time, and it takes a really big investment, because blueprint originals are expensive. Uh, copying is pretty similar to it. What you do with copying is first research a blueprint, and then you make copies and you sell those on contracts. The good thing about this is... You can usually make, like, weekly profits. You'll make copies for a week at a time. You'll sell them, and you'll have some nice income. Is it fun? Um, I don't think so. There's not much fun to be had in there, but that is mostly because it doesn't take a lot of time. You just put them in a queue, and you go away. Uh, Guilom asks, how much do copies tend to go for? Um, if you're talking about C1 copies, then not even 1 million. If you're talking about capital blueprints, then they can go for hundreds of millions. But those are the really big ones. Uh, another downside of if you're going to go copying is it takes a long time to break even. 
because you need a big investment. You'll buy a blueprint for uh, 500 million. You'll research it and start making copies, and it's going to take you a few months to uh, to earn that 400 million back. After that, it's a steady profit, though. So it's a uh, it's a pretty safe way and very non-risky. On to the next subject, which is another personal favorite of mine. Yeah, I have a lot of favorites, which is moon mining. Uh, since the university is based in Empire, I'm going to keep this one short, because moon mining is usually not worth it in Empire. There's no really profitable moon moons to be had. Everyone already has them. It's more of a, a null sack thing, and it only works as you, uh, if you have solved. To give you an idea about moon mining, though, is you set up a pass, which is a tower. Uh, you put in a moon mining array, it starts chewing away that moon. And every week or so, you take the moon goo, as we call it, you move it to a hub and you sell it. Doesn't take too much investment, but you're going to have to look for a decent moon. It takes about 100 million to get started, and the moons I'm doing is 100 million per moon per month. And that is already taking fuel into account. I have three moons myself, so that's 300 million profit for uh, no work at all. But like I said, don't think about moon mining unless you're uh, planning on going into NullSec. Um, so the next subject, which is um, pretty similar to moon mining, which is planetary interaction. Most of you guys have already heard of it. And some of you might think like, okay, it's not going to make a lot of profit, but it's decent. It depends. If you're, um, if you're using a lot of alts and you have a lot of planets, you can make about 500 million a month if you're making robotics. But it does take quite some time to set up and get the accounts for. Um, the profit also depends on how much time you want to spend in there. But yes, 500 million a month is with 10 planets or something. Uh, yeah, so like I said, it, it depends on the amount of effort you want to put in there. Um, if you just want to set it up and come back every week or month or so, you're not going to make a lot of profit. If you don't care about that and you don't mind uh, going there every day or so, then you can make like 500 million a month. And yes, you, you can make like 50 million per planet per month on uh, low effort. So yeah, that, that's the positive part about planetary interaction. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It's mostly passive. It has a decent income. There is one downside to it, though. If you're doing it in Empire and you're under war, it can be difficult to uh, pick up the materials from the planet. It really helps if you uh, if you have a corp of yourself, or like Tatoya says, alt hauling really comes into planetary interaction. I think planetary interaction is something I'd recommend to each and every Unista member. It's a uh, it's a really good way to uh, to set up a passive income. So uh, let's move on to the next subject, which is needed for planetary interaction, which is hauling. Uh, what can I say about hauling? Um, it's a very good thing to combine with either planetary interaction or trading. Um, what does hauling mean? It's just you get an industrial ship, you pick up stuff somewhere, uh, you move it somewhere else, and people pay you for it. Like General Sun Tzu linked, there's Red Frog, of course. Most people know about it. Um, 
if you're going to go that route, it's going to take you a lot more time and investment because Red Frog works with freighters. A freighter takes about, I think, a month to get into or something. And a freighter costs 1.2 billion or something, last time I checked. So it's going to take a lot of investment. So yeah, hauling, it, you can combine the trading very well, because what you can do is you buy stuff and you haul it to a mission hub, and then you sell it for a pretty big profit there. Um, for uni members, hauling is probably not a good option, because the uni is under constant wars. It's more of a thing you should do on an alt, an out-of-court alt. Oh, not anymore. That's new. That's very good, actually. That's why I left the university, Constant Wars. Yet, yeah, for today, it's probably not going to take too long until you guys get another war. You should stop dying to war targets so much. Maybe it'll give up. So, yeah, hauling. Um... The thing about hauling, though, is it um, it takes a lot of time. Um, if you're going to do it uh, efficiently, you're going to have to sit on your PC all the time. But if you're going to do it like Red Frog does it, you can do it autopilot. You just uh, set up your autopilot, you go away, and you come back, and you're at your destination. So, like I said, you know, it, it doesn't take too long to get into if you're doing it in an industrial. But if you're going to do it in a, in a big ship, it's going to take you some time. Um, one tip I can give you, though, is never, ever, ever, and I mean never, do public contract hauling. 90% of them are scams. Don't do them. It's not worth it. Do it either for your courtmates, your friends, or join Red Frog or Black Frog. It's not worth it doing publicly. And if, like um, Dracone says, watch out for Perenjita. Yeah, if that's going on, you don't want to be near there. Also, uh, watch out for the system Niarja. There's usually a lot of uh, a lot of gankers in there. Uh, so he asks, do people scam Red Frog? Not that I've heard of. It's pretty hard to scam Red Frog. I don't know how you're going to do it, because you need a collateral. They don't uh, accept contracts over 1 billion collateral. If you have anything over that, then there's Blue Frog and Black Frog, which are a lot more, uh, take a lot more risk. And they're pretty smart about it. Because if you're doing it through Red Frog, then you know when they're going to do it. With Blue Frog, it can take up to two weeks. Um, Laverne Ship asks, does their reputation protect them from ganking? Or is it just their ships that allow the use of AP? No. Both of the things are wrong. The way Red Frog works is Red Frog has a corp in which they accept the contracts, and then they have out-of-corp alts that they move the stuff with. So you can war deck Red Frog all you want. You'll never see them undock at all. And Black Frog freighters in Nullsec are blued, yeah. Most people don't shoot Red Frog or Black Frog anyway, because, you know, we all respect them. We love them. We need them. So, on to the next subject, which most units doesn't know about, and I can really recommend it to start out. It is salvaging. Salvaging really combines very well with missions, or you can do it in Mission Hub and ask people around to, um, to ask them, like, hey, can I salvage your stuff if you're not doing it? Most people will say, yeah, sure, go ahead. Or they're solving it themselves. Um, what I can recommend is either do it for a friend or a fellow Unista. If you're going to do it for other people, then there is risk involved because they might kill you. People do it, yeah. Also, don't do it in low sec unless you own the system, sort of. 
Uh, what I like to do is uh, have a second account with a salvager on there and just do them while I'm doing missions. The way salvaging works is you either go in a destroyer or Noctis and you loot Rex and you, yeah, you salvage them. That's pretty much it. The kind of is you can make it, it's not a lot. It's, I think, 10, 15, 20 million an hour if you're doing uh, good wrecks. It's usually a less. But if you're doing it correctly, there's not a lot of risk involved. Uh, it's easy to get into. And it doesn't take any investment at all. Because you can do it from just about any destroyer and uh, T1 salvagers. Um, there's also the term ninja salvaging. Uh, I'm not sure if the university allows it, but I wouldn't recommend it. What is ninja salvaging? It's um, scanning down people, warping to their stuff, and start salvaging it. People usually don't like it. Don't do it. It's not very nice. And if you ask people, then they will usually allow you to do it anyway. So yeah, don't need a salvage. If you have any questions about salvaging, just spoke your fellow Unista members. They're glad to help you out. And yeah, like Jeremy says, salvaging profit really depends on uh, the guy killing the stuff. If he's doing it fast, then you can make more risk. If he's slow, then you're going to sit around waiting most of the time. So, um, we're going to go over to the last five subjects, which are a bit more exotic. But as I mean, they are not the usual ways of making ISK. First on that list is, of course, people love it or hate it. Somer Blink. What I'm going to say about Blink, if you're going to make ISK on Somer Blink, uh, it depends if you have self-control. If you don't have any self-control, don't start blinking. You're going to lose a lot of ISK. It's, yeah, blink is evil. No, I don't agree. I've made over 3 billion in blink and still counting. I have zero risk because I never put in ISK. Yeah, it's a casino if you're doing it uh, the way they want you to. What I can say about blink is... You can do it uh, lottery-wise, then it's going to be luck. Uh, in the end, you're going to lose this. Or you can do it the way me and my friends do it, which is just doing promo blinks. If you just only do promo blinks, then eventually you're going to make profit. And you're going to have so many tickets that you'll probably never run out of them. Um, the, yeah. What I can say about promos is if you want to do them efficiently, I'm not going to say that I do it because I don't want to be banned, of course. I don't do it. I don't recommend it to me about it at all. Is using bots. Uh, Blink is very efficient at banning bots, so I would not recommend it. But it's possible. A lot of people do it. And you can do hundreds of promos a week. Otherwise, um, do it with a lot of friends. That's the way we do it. We have a lot of friends and we have an out-of-game chat channel where there's always someone watching the Blink website. So yeah, basically, Blink is a casino. Either you love it or you hate it. There's a really uh, big community around it. It's it's a lot of fun. That's the that's the good thing about Blink. It's fun, but you're gonna lose this. So if you don't mind that, do it. Yes, Marlin Spike. We have talked about planetary interaction. You can listen to the recording later if you want. So on to the next subject. Um, we already discussed this in the uh, the university channel before tonight. It's not very efficient, but hey, it works. It's being a hero. 
What do I mean by being a hero? It's flying a logistic ship, flying an interdictor or a heavy interdictor. Those are three ship types people always want in Nullsec and in Lowsec as well. And people will pay you to fly these ships. If you're in a good PvP corp, then you're going to be reimbursed if you lose them. And because you have insurance, you're going to make a profit every time you lose it. Um, like I said, it's not very efficient because it's not really a way of making ISK. It's more a way of, you know, you're PvPing and you make some ISK on the side. But if you want to be useful and you like PvP, then I can really recommend doing this. Talking about PvP, which moves us to the next subject, piracy. Uh, if you want to be a pirate, don't do it in EVE University. They don't allow piracy. Um, yeah, how does piracy work? Um, either you can blow stuff up and hope they carry expensive stuff, or you can do it a uh, true pirate way, which is ransoming. Uh, how does this work? You tackle something, you shoot at it a few times, and you say, like, hey, I can either blow you up, or you can pay me X amount of ISK, and I'll leave you alone. And you're free to go. Um, how does it work? Well, yeah. Either they pay you, or they blow you up. Like General Sue says, yeah, point a pod and start a convo with the pilot. That's the usual way you can do it, because pods don't shoot back. Yes, there's a problem with pirates that ransom and then kill. But usually... People start knowing these local pirates, and it's based on reputation, yeah. If you really want to make ISK this way, then be fair. If you ask for a ransom and people pay it, then leave them. Let them go. If you don't hold it, then yeah, you're going to be known. It's, uh, from what I've heard, it's, it's a really fun way to make ISK, but it's, you know, it's not very efficient because you'll lose a lot of ships doing this. But eventually you can make some profit, but it usually only covers your losses. Yeah, like General Sue says, it's more like maintaining your wallet while you have fun. I agree totally on that point. It's uh, it's a fun way of PvP, and it takes knowing your systems, knowing your local, your area and stuff. So we have two more subjects to go right on time which are not the usual ways of making ISK. Um, the first one of these is if you are rich in real life. Some people might be and don't have a lot of time to spend on EVE. What I can say for them is buy Plex. I mean, if you have a lot of cash on hand and you don't want to spend any time on EVE doing stuff you don't like, buy Plex, sell it in Jitter, you have ISK. Uh, I don't recommend this for uh, making really big amounts of ISK, but it's like if you want to start trading or manufacturing and you have some money on hand and you don't want to rat your way up to 500 million, then you can buy a Plex. You'll have 500 million and then you can work your way from there. I have done it before. It works, but, you know, it takes real life cash. So, yeah, there's a... One last subject I want to cover. Um, not a lot of people may know about this, actually. I am not an expert on it myself. I do know some people that do it. It's uh, character training. Trading, that is, not training. I mean, that's a way as well. Um, one question from Aeon, though, is... What is your outlook on the Odyssey to account training at Plex? Do you think Plex will skyrocket in price? Um, I'm not sure. I've not looked at the market, but I think they're already skyrocketing. Or at least they're going up a little bit. Yeah, I do think that the price of Plex is going to go up. Um, it usually goes up when FanFest arrives. And like Tracon says, it's, it's way too late to start speculating. You've missed the boat on it. Um, it's, it's a way to make ISK, you know, but... 
Um, back back to the character trading. Uh, how does character trading work? Um, there's two ways to it. Either you make a new account yourself, you train a character, uh, a specialized one, on, for instance, uh, a Titan pilot, which takes three years. It's a long-term thing. A carrier pilot, which you can do in one year. Or just a battleship mission running pilot, which can take a few months. It takes some investment. Um, what you can do uh, is you make the character, you trade it up, train it up. And then you go on the official forums to the character bazaar and you sell it. If you do your research, you can make billions. My current CEO has done it a lot. He has been trading them, which is buying a character, um, training it up for like maybe a week or two, bumping up some scales here and there, and selling it back. You can make a lot of risk on it, but it takes a lot of investment. It takes a lot of research. You really need to know what you're doing. Uh, like General Sun Tzu says, some of the older players were selling characters, but they did it before the scale queue. I don't know, actually, not from that time. It's probably true. And like Trucom says, yes, it does take a place to transfer characters, but it usually is calculated in with the cost of a character. So, that covers the topics I had in mind. Uh, if there's any questions, please say so now. I don't have a lot of time left, though. So, um, that kind of finishes up. I'd like to thank you all for your attention and showing up. Uh, if you like the class, please let me know. If you have any pointers, let me know as well. I'm always eager to learn. And if there's a lot of questions, um, I'm open to having a part two, going into detail more, answering more questions. And you can always start a convo with me or send me an email. So yeah, thank you for your time.